we will get going. And when she joins us, we can loop yes. her right in. She's just joined us. Thank you, oh, everyone, good. for being here. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining today's lunch panel presentation. My name is Whitney Garman, and I will be this session's moderator. If you have any questions, concerns, or technical issues throughout today's session, please message me in chat. This session is a panel session titled Leading District-Wide Family Engagement Using the Partnership Schools Approach. Moderated by Dr. Barbara Boone, leaders from Ohio Network of Partnership Schools will, sh will share their insights, challenges, and the positive changes they've seen as a result of their partnerships with families. We hope that you'll find this session inspiring and informative as we work together to support the success of every student. If you would like contact hours for this session, a code will be provided at the end. Please be on the lookout for this code as it will only be provided once. If you have any questions for the panelists, please use the chat or the Q&A feature and I'll pass them along at the appropriate times. And of course, you can join the conversation on Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag OH Summit 24 to share your thoughts. Thank you. And now I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Boone. Great. So today we're focusing on the importance of intentional design for family engagement. And our panelists today are all leaders who guide the design of family engagement efforts for multiple schools. So they all use the partnership approach an evidence-based approach to organizing, leading, and planning family school partnerships. Each school in the systems that these panelists lead has a leader for family engagement and a team of parents, school staff members, students, and community members that plan strategies for engaging all of the families in their school. So each school designs strategies for their own unique school community. So I wanna introduce our panel members. We have Holly Christie. She's the Director of Student Support Programs in Mansfield City Schools. Welcome, Holly, so glad you're here. We have Stancy Sykes, who is the Community Partnership Coordinator and Student and Family Services at Akron Public Schools. Welcome, Stancy. We're glad you're here. We have Katherine Thomas. Now, Katherine is the director of Universal Pre-Kindergarten uh, at Starting Point in Cuyahoga County. And that's a little different than a school district, but she's got 62 preschools that she is leading. So once again, she's got a big system of individual schools. And then Juma Acharya, our family engagement and diversity specialist at Licking Heights Local School District. So welcome to all of you. I'm so glad you're here and I wanna jump right in. Just briefly, each one of you, um, please tell us about how you came to be in your role as a leader for family school partnerships and just describe what you do. And I'll just, um, I'll go ahead and I'll go around my screen and just, so Holly, would you start us off? Sure will. Um, thanks for having me here today. Um, I, as, in my role as director of student support programs, I am responsible for the state and federal funding. So uh, family engagement is a huge piece of that. So it was natural for this to uh, me for looking for ways for involving more people um, to be trained and not just one person responsible for a whole school to have a family engagement plan. So part of my responsibility is uh, monitoring those, making sure that those are done every year, but also including families in decision making in the buildings. Thank you, Holly. Stancy, can we go to you next? All right. So uh, to the part of how I came to be in, um, in this role. So I started out my career in higher education and uh, I worked at various colleges and universities. And in those roles, I would always hear when we would talk about families, that the families were more like helicopter families. They were just way too involved. When I transitioned to secondary and elementary, I would hear families aren't involved enough. They need to do more. And I was just so intrigued, like what's going on with you know, our families and how can we figure out how to bring our worlds together and co-create solutions so that we can bring home and school together so that we can serve our students and uh, help with their success. But currently um, in my role, I oversee district-wide family engagement initiatives, coordinate with school-based family leaders, 
develop partnerships with community organizations and work with our teams on aligning family engagement strategies with our district goals. Great, thank you, Stancy. Catherine, can we go to you next? Absolutely, good afternoon, everyone. So I'll start with uh, saying that I've been working with children and families in a variety of capacities for the past 30 years. And so some of that work included preschool intervention. Um, I worked with Help Me Grow for a while. And in 2007, when I heard about the Universal Pre-Kindergarten Program, I was able to mesh my two greatest passions, which is working with families and early childhood education. So I started off as the Family Engagement Coordinator. We uh, heard about the National Network of Partnership Schools model. We've been using that since 2007. And then now my role has evolved into the, being the Director of Universal Pre-Kindergarten, but I'm still responsible for uh, family engagement and for implementation of the model in now over 70 sites. So we've grown over the years, starting with 24 in 2007 up till over over 70 sites. I do have a team that works very closely with me on that. But um, again, the, the reason why I'm doing the work is because of my passion. Thank you, Catherine. And Juma, now to you. Hello, everyone. I am a school family engagement uh, specialist and DIA specialist for the district of Licking High Local School here in uh, Associated Central Ohio. Before coming to this role, I was working at a re local refugee resettlement agency where I work with school district and families. So as a part of that, I was also involved heavily with the Ohio Family Statewide Family Engagement Center. I was their advisory council. I was also part of parent member at the beginning because my son started school. So I had a very meandering road coming to the current role. So and then I joined Ohio College of Social Work to get my PhD, and I am currently a PhD student also. So my focus shifted from my work experience shifted towards family engagement component of research. Like I have seen that experience that personally myself as a foreign born parent and also working with the uh, refugee and immigrant population. So that actually molded me to go to a different program and get something when I was involved with uh, Ohio State Family Engagement Center. It was that time that was eye opening to me how family engagement can be crucial. So. As I was continuing my education, I was offered the position at Licking Height, which is my home school. And <clears throat> I've been involved with the school previously at different level, but this time as an employee. So I usually oversee family uh, engagement and also uh, make an event or program for the district. I work very closely with our sixth of our school building. We have our ATP teams. I coordinate the meetings and also uh, do a lot of family engagement initiative for the district here. So I'm very right. excited to be here. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I hope everybody has heard the different pathways, the different ways that you kind of entered the work and then the, the different roles you're in. You're all slightly different, you know, positions, but you're all overseeing this. So um, so let's, let's uh, go to our, our next question here. And for this one, I'm gonna ask Holly and Stancy and, and Juma to respond. So let's um, start off here. So describe the, the design of the system or the structures you've put in place to support family and school engagement in your district. So the teams, the leadership, how you communicate maybe, or maybe even how you're connecting with other school initiatives. All right, so how about uh, we start with Stancy on this one? Sure. So for this question, I wanna share a little bit about our partnership that African Public Schools has with United Way Summit Medina. So in the district, which I really enjoy working with African Public Schools because my plan was always to work in family engagement and to know that APS has a heart for families, um, it, it's just been a joy. So starting from our strategic plan with our cornerstone that's focused on partnerships and family and community engagement to the decades long of family liaisons in the district, growing that from seven to now almost 30 across the district to um, our newest initiative that started back in 2019 with our first family resource center with United Way uh, is just another example of how we are focused on uh, supporting our families uh, here in the district. So a little bit more on that as it relates to um, 
the network and partnership schools. So one of the things that we wanna make sure that we have is uh, structures in place like our cluster-based structure, leadership and teams, professional development, and a data-driven approach. So with our cluster-based structure, our district is comprised of six clusters. We do have uh, five FRCs uh, throughout five of those clusters. And we have family liaisons that work throughout the clusters. And we wanna make sure that with that cluster base, that not only are we reaching the buildings with our family liaisons, not only are we re reaching the clusters with the FRC coordinators, but we're also reaching the uh, community as well. So with the leadership teams, we are putting in place those action teams for partnerships and uh, that allows us to ensure that we're working with community, we're working with families, and make sure we also make sure that we have student voice as part of that to uh, continue to meet the needs of what's happening. Because I think one of the things that's so special about the work is that, again, we're going beyond the school, going out into the community. We are really trying to help families if it's with basic needs, community health, or whatever it might be, um, to get a better understanding of what their needs are, and then also provide those services for them. When it comes to professional development, um, we're working with State Support Team 8, and they're doing training with our family liaisons, also the coordinators with the six types of involvement that have been developed by Dr. Joyce Epstein. And that data-driven approach, our coordinators and our liaisons use a database system to track family interactions and resource allocation across the clusters. Um, and we also have regular program evaluation and feedback for continuous improvement of services and the strategies. Thanks, Dancy. I know that our team was excited to get a, a um, learn more about the data system that you've built and the data dashboard and things that you are have available so folks can um, really track um, well and have good data around your family engagement work. So um, how about I go to Holly now? Hey, I enjoyed listening to that, Stancy. That's so interesting. I uh... The structure that I have in place was already, I built from something that was already in place. So I have, since I'm title, we, I have what's called a compliance team. And yes, uh, family engagement is a part of um, compliance, but we want it to be so much more than just that. So I have a representative from every school building that attends these monthly meetings. And what we found is that the Title I teacher is often in charge of all the family engagement. And we didn't want that, but we didn't know how to get away from it. So when we became involved with NMPS and Ohio Statewide, it, it was very welcoming to them to hear, well, let's look at this in a different way. Let's, let's get some more people on board here to help with this work and make it, make it better. So I, I started with something that we already had, but from there I became the district leader and then came up with a plan to uh, train action teams in each building. And we started with just two. So we piloted two and then went from there and now everybody's been trained. But the important thing about the action teams was making sure that there was good representation from the building and plus a family member, which has not, always been in place. So we wanted to make sure that that became a part. We um, have a family liaison for each building. Um, so they can be a part of that team and a part of that creating a plan for engaging with our community and our families. So um, I would say uh, one way that we monitor is through surveys, a lot of surveys with our families to see how we're doing in that area. So I think that All right, Holly froze on us there, at least for me. Sounds like she was wrapping up. So I'm gonna, uh, Juma, so let's hear from you. Some... Oh, oh, Holly, are you are, are you done? Yes. Okay, great, All right, thanks. <laughs> All right, pass it off to Juma. All right, so yeah, here at Licking Heights, Licking Heights is a very small district in comparison to other speakers. Uh, I think we are one of 
the very small school district in the close of our metro uh, Columbus here. So in our, our uh, feminine engagement design uh, is a little uh, different because it's a very small school district. I oversee the family engagement component of for the district. So we have six buildings. Each of the buildings have their ATP teams. So each elementary school has their own accent team that includes teachers, staff, administrator, and family member. And this team will collaboratively work with creative implementation of engagement and plans and tailor towards the specific need of the community. And uh, the other thing that we started doing since last year is we did what we call community work or neighborhood work where we started going, uh, school teachers, administrator, and myself, we started going out in the community and do a kind of community drive-through, more like meeting families where they are and meeting and talking to them and asking them how the school experience has been for them and for their kids. Because our neighborhood consists of so many families who have recently come to the country. These are immigrants who have come from all across the world. and. Because the diversity is growing so rapidly in our district, we want the superintendent and the leadership wanted to meet families like out in the community to see how things are going. And we uh, conducted a lot of community listening sessions where we had an opportunity to learn from our families. How do they feel about how are they included, how their voice is being heard? So this was one of our very signature events that we did last year. So this session provided an opportunity for families to share their experience, their suggestions, and also how to improve their engagement in the school. So this also helped us to build that trust and establish more personal connection with our families and school leaders. And as a part of that uh, community and uh, family engagement, what we did is we started creating a family ambassador group. So from each different community, we have a lot of different community. Our school district is small. We have 5,300 students, but we speak 51 different languages in our school district. So which means that we have so many different cultural groups within our school boundary and we are the our family like uh, population structure is like that. So what we did is we started creating a small group of uh, family ambassadors who would then periodically meet. Uh, they will meet with the school leader, with the principal. So these are not just building based, they're more for the district because our, uh, each of our school, they don't have a family ambassador as such in the building or liaison in the building. I'm the sole one person, but I have, uh, we, I do that, but along with the administrator and other staff. So what we did that because of that, that neighborhood walk and community walk, what we end up doing is having more and more listening session where parents and families started coming together and sharing their experiences. So families were encouraged to form their own group within their cultural uh, group so one linguistic group so that way we can have interpreters for our system so it was very eye-opening that our school leadership was so uh, like they were very interested in knowing more about the culture of the community and also how we can build that relationship with them so this top level involvement emphasizes district commitment of fostering that strong very strong school family relationship between them to ensure engagement initiatives are aligned with what broader objective of the school district is. So that way we started integrating our school initiative in our family engagement uh, plan. So we, family engagement is more like embedded within our district strategic planning plan and it's connected with our initiative like uh, through our NNPS model, the district has adopted and this aligned, this so well aligned with our NNPS model and we are using that now. And also, we have started doing more like culturally responsive outreach. We have uh, we identified some of our key stakeholders in our community. We have we call them our ambassadors who are very easy to reach, and we start reaching out to the family through our that well created the network. So this is how our structures are developed. We are actually adapting to the new change in the district because we have rename our school. We have re our school boundary has been reshaped. So things are all going that way. So our family engagements are all in, in coordinated with all these things. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Juma. You know, I hear all of you saying um, families on your teams and Holly, admittedly, sometimes that's hard and we have to keep working at that. Um, so, but families being so important on the team and that, um, and then hearing from Juma saying, we, we needed to hear from more families. And it, um, and so you are doing uh, outreach that you hear from more families and that then again helps to inform that planning that that te the teams are doing in their buildings. So 
It's really cool. I'm, the other thing I want to say is in this model, right, communication is two way. And we, we always like are emphasizing that in such a great examples that you're giving of listening and sharing of information. So thank you for that. Um, so let's go on to another question here. And um, this one is I'm going to ask of um, Catherine and Holly and Juma. So how has the partnership approach affected the culture and, and climate of your schools? Catherine, let's start with you. Sure. I think one of the best things about the partnership approach is that it yields positive uh, impact for everyone that's involved, right? So for the administrators, the teachers, the family members, everyone who's walking across the threshold at UPK sites, they've reported feeling a sense of belonging, feeling valued, feeling that they're they're participating in work that matters. They're doing something that is helping not just the children, but also helping themselves, building leadership skills. I mean, all different types of, of positive results. And these, quite frankly, are things that I wasn't really anticipating. So I looked at the school family and community partnerships as we're going to get these families engaged and this is going to be awesome. But we have also noticed positive effects for everyone involved. And one example of this is our concerted effort to involve fathers and male role models. We began this in 2009. And from that, you know, my, my expectation was I just want more males in the building. I was going around and observing all of these activities and events, saw lots of moms, aunties and grandmas, didn't see a lot of males. And so we made a concerted effort to do that. We had our sites to participate in father-friendly assessments, create an implementation plan and host at least one event geared specifically toward uh, fathers and male role models. And so again, I just wanted to see more males in the building. What we got from that is we then saw more males on the action team. We saw more males participating in other activities outside of that one activity. They wanted to know what else is going on in the school. What else can we do? They were you know, cleaning up the schoolyards. They were coming in and reading to the children. And another thing that I noticed is that when the males were involved and in the classrooms, and if there was a child there that didn't have a male presence, they made sure to incorporate that child in what they were doing as well. So it really turned out to be uh, a fantastic event and activity. And also, you know, keeping in mind that we want these the males to return for future activities and events. And they did just that. And they then reported that they felt more of a sense of belonging for the site. And that originally they had thought notes go home and they're really for mom. They don't, they don't really mean me. They, they want mom to go. They want you to help the child with this particular at-home activity. And they felt like they were more involved in that and really appreciated us reaching out. And so we've certainly continued on that, building on those best practices of involving male role models since 2009. Oh, what a great story. Um, I didn't know you were going to share that. And it's just great. I mean, this idea that you were designing, like you were very intentional, you got some data, you put some things in place, and then all that came out of that, even it sounds like it went beyond your expectations of, so, wow, that's fabulous. Um, uh, Catherine, or uh, Catherine, Holly, how, Holly, how about um, you um, share with us about this, this idea around culture and climate in your schools? Sure. I, I think the biggest thing that I notice um, that I've seen a shift in is just the approach um, that our staff and school takes with the community. It's definitely more collaborative than it's ever been before. And I think it just was a missing piece they didn't know. Um, what we do now uh, when we have open house or activities is invite community agencies into the buildings so that they're there as a resource to our families. So our families are learning about. And, and the good thing about that partnership is they want to work with our families. You know, those are their clients. So they're looking to help people and they, by inviting them to come in and not sending families to them, it connects them with us and that we want to help. And sometimes we don't have in place, uh, maybe the teachers didn't know what that agency did. By having them there at a table, they're able to even learn what resources are available to our families so that they can, um, refer them to them if need be. So I think that's the biggest difference I see is just that collaborative approach. We're all in this together. This is a community. And where we really saw it was um, 
when we had um, our Peace on the Block initiative. And unfortunately, we've had some violence in this area that uh, was last year. And really the community pulling together to say, we wanna end this. And by we had at our high school, 32 tables set up from agencies of people that want to be involved with our families and creating, helping to create safe environments for everyone. So um, I just really think that that's been the best part of this for us is inviting the community. Now, what I really wanna do is get one on the action team, somebody from the community agency, and that's an area of improvement for us. But um, I don't think that will be hard to do because most buildings have someone they're uh, partnering with. So that's, mm -hmm. That's where I see the biggest impact. Thanks, Holly. That's, um, you know, family and community engagement and bringing it all together. And we talked about communication and one of the other six types we focus on is partnership schools is community collaboration and how that helps to engage and support our families. Uh, that's just a beautiful um, example you gave of, and how you kicked it off with that um, uh, with that initiative in the schools and families and can be responding to a, a community need, a community event um, together. It just sounds like it's something that really strengthens a whole community and schools as well. So thank you for that great uh, example and sharing that with us. And I'm going to go back to Juma um, around the effect you, you're seeing on the culture and climate of your schools. Absolutely. So the National Network partnership approach uh, has a very profound impact in our school district in our culture and climate of our school because what we what i have seen is that i think our movement has started from our school centric movement towards family centric activities because now we are seeing uh, we were in the past when i when i know what school was doing in the past before i joining uh, taking this job was more like how parents will go to the school and like do activities what the school wanted them to do like more like uh, involving them at the school level. But now here, what I see today after having a lot of community conversation and a lot of our feedback from our uh, family members, what we have seen is parents are more involved and they want to come to the school, but also it is like they want to create a family centric kind of programs where they get engaged. They can, they have their vision, they have their word, they, they know that we listen to them. And when we listen to them, we partner with them. So we don't know. And also what I have also seen is more like the school leaders are, very proactive and that the message has gone very quickly over the district saying that, hey, let us start treating these parents as partners, not as visitors, because this is what we have seen. When we go out in the community, we have seen that. If we call them uh, visitors, there is very less thing they could do, but these are the partners. Without their partners, we cannot achieve, we cannot go far. So I think our superintendent and director of people services were very intentional in this. When we started doing this community listening session, I think this became a very significant, I would consider a signature event that we started doing. And that has given a kind of autonomous to our parents, like family, they, they have started creating their own group outside the school. And now we have these different groups which sit together. We are also in the plan to do some sort of provide training to our families and how effectively and meaningfully they can engage with. So I think it, the NNPS model has given such a wide area for our families to get educated about how they can get involved. As I mentioned earlier in our previous question is that our district has a very diverse family composition. We, as I said, we it is, it is such a big diversity within the district. When I started, uh, when I moved to this uh, neighborhood back in 2016, my school district had like 16 languages spoken at that time, but now seven, eight years after, now there are 53 different languages spoken within the district. So it itself speaks how much community collaborative effort we need. And I think an NPS model has given that framework and we have been using this and we have been finding it very helpful. Uh, the other thing I really like to, uh, add here is I think school is also very intentional in respecting what community lives here and what what is the cultural asset they have within the community they have we are still reaching out we have we are partnering with community activities that's happening outside in the community so it is not like everything is happening within the school because we did a lot of community listening session out in the community we went to the churches to the temples to the uh, grocery store, coffee shop, daycare center because these are the community hub where families will be very open to talk about 
And this was such an eye opening. And when they see principal, superintendent, their teacher coming out and meeting them out, it's such an amazing experience to see how connection can be built up, mm -hmm. how that trust can be developed. And there was there were time when parents were teaching our teachers how to make tea, like a Nepali tea or Somali tea, and what does it mean? So there it was not just learning what school is providing them, but also what the community is providing to the school. Mm -hmm. Who are the children that you are teaching in your classroom? Where do they come from? What kind of neighborhood do they live in? Where do they come? What, what do they carry in the backpack? So this was such an opening uh, opportunity for our administrator and leaders to see. And I think that has led to our, our strategic planning has added family component very solely. So we have a separate reason of our, for our family engagement. So this was wonderful. So NNPS has given that framework and its spirit to the work that we do. Thank you, Juma. You know, we have one last quick question. We've got one minute or so left here. And this is just for Stancy and Catherine. What recommendations or words of encouragement do you have for other district or system leaders for family and school engagement? And I'll start with Stancy. Just on the lines of what Juma was just sharing about, and I saw a lot of notes about it, that parents are seen as partners and not visitors. So just focusing on that collaborative aspect when it comes to partnering with families, I know a lot of times it might be easier said than done. And we have like a range from cooperation to coordination, but really collaborating is what really makes the difference. And, um, once we understand those differences between cooperation where families and schools work alongside each other, but perhaps not in deep alignment versus coordination where they may be actively aligning our efforts, but still maintaining those distinct roles and responsibilities, but moving towards collaboration where it's transformative. And that's the central activity where we can really make those connections and make a difference and transform the lives of our students, our families, our community. Um, I just want to say, I think that is where our work lies. I know that's what we're all striving for. And uh, I just wish us all well in working in that area. Thank you, Stancy. And Catherine, will you wrap us up? Absolutely. I, I agree 100% with everything that Stancy just said. And some of the my response was going to be right along with that. But I thought about something else, which is making sure that our schools have an opportunity to network one with the other and sharing their successes, sharing their challenges, sharing those best practices. I tell folks all the time when I'm training is that all the, the answers to our problems are in this room. And so if we do that in a very siloed way, where one school has success in one area and challenges in another and never coming together and sharing that, we're struggling with the same things. So I think it is very important, not just for the professional development piece, but allowing that time for schools to network one with the other. Oh, thank you, Catherine. I'm glad that you added that. I think there's so much power in that learning from one another and how you as a leader can make that happen. You can um, set that up for folks. So I appreciate all of you so much. You're very busy people, that, but people that I admire so much. And I'm glad that other people have gotten to hear from you um, here today. So with that, um, I think we're going to wrap up so folks can get ready and have a short break before they head to their next session. Um, and here we go. So one thing that we want to wrap up with is that each of the leaders here are, um, they've been talking about partnership schools. They're an Ohio partnership school district, and we um, are welcome other Ohio schools and districts, community schools to, um, to, to take this approach. And we're here to support you um, in that. So we have um, created um, a way that many of you can to jump on board and in, in your own, at your own pace, in your own time. Um, and so uh you can learn more about that in, at the QR code there on a website we have with several pages with examples and more information for you. But know that October 1st, we are opening up um, all of our um, professional learning modules for our Ohio partnership schools. And so new schools and districts um, can, can come on board. And we welcome you because um, I think you have heard today about the transfer formation that can occur at so many levels and in so many ways when you have leaders um, who are dedicated to this, who create systems um, in which we can really make wonderful change for our students and their families. So please join me in thanking our panelists, and I hope to see you all in another session here in just a short while.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. If you would like to receive contact hours for the session, please save the code word LEAD, L-E-A-D. And don't forget to enter it in the feedback survey at the end of your day. Again, the code for this session is LEAD. If this is your final session for the day, you can take the survey now. I'll put that in the chat in just a moment. We do ask that you only take the survey once, so please don't take the survey until after the final session for the day. The next session will begin at 1245. There'll be a break and I'll stay in the room if you have any questions or need help getting to your next room. But remember to keep the conversation going on Twitter using the hashtag OH2024 and visit our webpage for all information about today's events. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all so much.